Rocco with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the ghost ship. Our story opens in a small fishing village where we find Clutch and company relaxing and writing another chapter in Clutch's adventure logbook. Their room is a pleasant one, overlooking a small fishing boat harbor. So quiet around here, Spinner, I almost wish we'd have a little excitement. Yeah, Clutch, I was beginning to think that same thing. I guess Paddlefoot's a bit bored, too. I was just wondering, don't these little fishing boats ever move? They've been right in the same spot ever since we took this room. Not one of them's been out fishing. I was thinking about that, too, Spinner. This is the height of the fishing season, the time when all the boats should be out. This whole town makes its living by fishing. You know, Spinner, I'm curious. I think we'll go down to the harbor, see what's going on. Down at the dock, Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot are walking past a line of tied-up fishing boats when a shout hails them. Clutch Cargo! Joe Papianagas. I am so happy to see you, my friend. I'd forgotten you lived in this village. Oh, I am so happy to see you, Klutz. I heard that you were here. Joe, you look kind of worried. What's the trouble? I am worried, Klutz. For over two weeks, we haven't fished once. I can't hire a crew to run my boat. What's the matter? No fish? It's not that. Fishing is the best in years. I have never seen so many. Then what is it? Why don't the crews go out? A terrible thing, Clutch. A ghost ship. Golly! A ghost ship? <laughs> That's hard to believe, Joe. But if you say so... I saw it. We all saw it with our own two eyes. It appeared out of the fog, came right at my boat. I turned away, and at the last minute, the ghost ship turned away, too, and just missed us. Didn't the ship's captain sound his foghorn to warn you? That's just it, Clutch. I looked the ship over from stern to bow with my binoculars. The ship's steering wheel was turning round and round. I looked closer and saw the ship being steered by a ghost. A pure white ghost. I've heard of people seeing an image they thought was a ghost, but... Clutch, it was a ghost. I saw it. We all saw it. Was the ship a sailing schooner? Yes, a three-master, except her sails were all tattered and torn. Wind couldn't possibly fill them. Golly, give me cold chills. Sounds weird, all right. All the fishermen are afraid to fish. But if we don't earn money, we cannot pay for our boats or our homes. We will lose them. I beg you, please help us, Clutch. Well, of course we'll help. Now, boys? I... I... Yeah, we'd like to, Clutch. Golly, Paddlefoot, a real ghost ship. There's your answer, Joe. We'll go. From my heart, I say thank you for all of us. Get your boat ready, Joe. What's the name of her? It's called the Guppy. She's tied up further down, and she's all ready to go. We'll meet you aboard the Guppy in 30 minutes. I hope you will never regret helping us. Golly, Clutch. I hope we don't either. A ghost ship and a fishing fleet that's afraid to leave the harbor. Hmm. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot and the ghost ship. You remember, Clutch and company were staying in a small fishing village. They noticed that none of the fishing boats had left the harbor since their arrival. After meeting Joe Papianagas, an old friend, Clutch and company learned of a ghost ship roaming the sea. There she is, Spinner, the Guppy. Nice little boat. And there's Mr. Papianagas on deck. Come aboard. We're all stocked with food and water. Meanwhile, in his office, not far from the docks, sits Phineas P. Pennygrabber, counting his money. <laughs> Another million dollars in cash. It won't be long now. That's the first boat whistle that's sounded in three weeks. I'd better see what's going on. Give her two more short blasts, Spinner, to let the other fishermen know we're going out. Somebody heard your whistle, Joe. Here he comes now. 
That's Phineas P. Penny Grabber, the richest man in the village. All of us are buying our homes and our boats from him. Welcome aboard, Mr. Penny Grabber. You arrived just in time. We were just going out. Hey, what's that? Going out after what happened? One good scare from that ghost ship should be enough for a smart man. Don't be a fool, Papianicus. Give up this fishing job. With that ghost ship prowling the ocean, it's too dangerous. But, Mr. Penny Grabber, none of us can afford to lose our boats and homes. Better than losing your lives. Oh, back up, sir. No one's lost his life yet, and I doubt if anyone will. Eh? Hey? Who are you? This is my friend Clutch Cargo and his pal Spinner and Battlefoot. Clutch Cargo, the author and adventurer? Why, I've heard of you. I've read your book. I heard Clutch was in town, so I asked him to help us. If anyone can do it, he can. Hmm. Well, I still think you'd all better forget fishing before something terrible happens. Now that I've heard about the ghost ship, I won't be satisfied until I find out the reason for it. Hooray, Clutch! I knew you wouldn't back out. <laughs> Pretty happy, too. He's a smart dog. I like him. If you've made up your minds, go ahead. But remember, I warned you. Thank you for your interest, Mr. Pennygrabber. We'll take our chances. As Phineas P. Pennygrabber leaves, the guppy moves from the dock and is underway. Not knowing in which direction the ghost ship might appear, Joe heads the guppy for the open sea. So, Mr. Pennygrabber is the man who sold you your homes and your boats. Seems to me he's mighty anxious to have you give up fishing. We'd better use our binoculars now and keep a close watch. The ghost ship appears so suddenly in a cloud of mist. Spinner, do you think you can steer the boat? You bet he can, Joe. Spinner and Paddlefoot are good sailors. You take over, Spinner, and head into the sun while Clutch and I go on deck and watch. Gee, Paddlefoot, look at me, a real ship's captain. <laughs> Boy, I... Clutch! Clutch! Can Clutch and company escape being hit by the ghost ship? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. Clutch Cargo, with his pal Spinner and Paddlefoot, and the ghost ship. You remember last time, Clutch and company met Phineas P. Pennygrabber, the wealthiest man in the village, the man from whom all the fishermen bought their boats and homes. Pennygrabber had warned Joe Papianicus to give up fishing. Clutch wanted to see the ghost ship. They had just set out when... The ghost ship, Joe. Come on, Spinner's alone at the wheel. Hurry, Clutch! Hurry! It's going to hit us! We're here, Spinner. Let me take the wheel. Reverse speed, Joe! Can you come? If there was any doubt in your mind before about the ghost ship, you can't doubt it now. Right, Joe. Look, the ghost ship is turning about. We'll follow her. Gee, Clutch, what if we find real ghosts? I hope we do, Spinner. Or at least find out who's trying to make everybody believe they're real ghosts. It's very dangerous, Clutch. I wish you'd change your mind and come back to shore. After seeing the ghost ship twice, I'm ready to quit fishing like Mr. Penny Grabber thinks we should. Not as long as Clutch and company can stay on the job. Don't you see, Joe? Someone wants you to quit fishing. No fish, no money, no boat, and no home. Of course you are right, Clutch. But to see you take chances for all of us. Look, Clutch. so I can grab that rope that's hanging over the side. Slowly, the guppy pulls alongside the mysterious schooner. Just a little closer, Joe. I can almost reach the line. Attaboy, Clutch. You made it. There he goes, over the side. He's on the deck. 
pretty quiet on board so far. Looks deserted. This old tub sure has had rough treatment. Doors broken off. Glass broken out. Deck warped. And what a funny name for a ship. Rebarginep. Sounds like a word from another country. Rebarginep. What's this? The ship's logbook. Wow, look at that date. 1737. This is a real old one. Clutch! Clutch! Is it all right for Paddlefoot and me to come on board? I think it's okay, Spinner. Haven't seen anybody yet. It's deserted. Tie the bosun's chair on the end of this line, Joe. Let Spinner get in. I'll pull him up. Okay, Clutch, if you think it's safe. Joe ties the bosun's chair to Clutch's line, and soon Spinner and Paddlefoot are on their way up. Couple more seconds, Spinner, and you're here. Whee! This is fun, eh, Paddlefoot? Good boy. You made it. Put Paddlefoot on deck. Grab the rail. There. Golly! Look at those old sails. And no wind could ever fill them, Spinner. Something else is moving the ship. Let's look around. But don't get out of my sight. This ship sure is in a terrible mess. You're right. There's the ship's wheel. Seems to be steering herself. And look at that spooky door. Chicago. talking sense. You're being smart. Come over to my office and sign some papers. Clutch waits long enough for Joe and Penny Grabber to walk out of sight. Then he starts the boat engine and heads out to sea. And in Penny Grabber's office, Joe tells him that Clutch has taken the guppy out again to the ghost ship. Huh? What's that you're saying? Penny Grabber rushes to another room and sends a message to the ghost ship. Army Arlo, get your ghost suit on. We have some haunting to do. Mr. Pennygrabber says they are coming back. 
Right now, Skipper. I'll put me sheet on right now. When you stop that Harlow, you scared me to death. Come on, we've got work to do. We must get them this time, once and for all. Clutch and company arrive at the ghost ship again and climb aboard. Stay close, Spinner. Let's be quiet. I smell danger. We'll pull out the release pin on this rotten mast, Harlow, and push! Look out, Clutch! We're going to crush! Under that boat is our only chance. How can Clutch and company avoid being crushed? Be sure to tune in for the next exciting episode with Clutch Cargo. and company with Joe Papianagas overtook the ghost ship and discovered the name of the ghost ship was Penny Grabber, spelled backwards. They returned to the village, then set out again for the ghost ship. Once on board... Under that boat! Lucky this lifeboat was here. Ghosted one ghost. Here's where they went. But it's locked. Whoa, well, listen to that. They're trying to scare us again. Stand back. I'm going to force this door open. Look, Clutch. A record player. That's where your ghost sounds came from. Must have loudspeakers all over the ship. They're gone. But there's only one place to go. That hatch. Must be a secret hold. I'll put that sheet over my head, Spinner. I'm going to do a little spooking myself. <laughs> Golly, Clutch. You look just like one of them. That's the idea, Spinner. They won't know who I am. Good luck, Clutch. I'll wait right here. Clutch, disguised as a ghost, slowly slides into the secret mm. hole. I guess we we'll put one over on them, eh, Force? Quiet, Harlow. I heard something. It's a ghost. Run for your life, Governor. You got me. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. You seem to have got yourselves all tied up. Don't tell me you guys are afraid of ghosts. You. Clutch cargo. Your little ghost game's over. Now we'll turn you over to the authorities. We didn't mean you no harm, Governor. We was hired to scare the fishermen. That's right, Mr. Pennygrabber hired us. I thought so. We'll take care of Mr. Pennygrabber, too. Clutch and company tie a line to the ghost ship and start towing it back to port. Look, there's Joe and Mr. Pennygrabber standing on the dock. This must be quite a surprise for Pennygrabber. What are you doing with my ship? The ghost ship is yours, Mr. Penny Grabber? No, I didn't mean that. I, I... We know, Penny Grabber. The ghost ship's yours, all right. We're going to give it back to you. We're going to put you on your ship and send you to sea. Oh, no. No, I can't go to sea. Why, why, I, I've got, I get seasick. You're going, Penny Grabber. And your two phony ghosts are going with you. <laughs> Cargo. Be sure to tune in for the next exciting adventure with Clutch Cargo.